Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name's Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be doing a perched hummingbird. Somebody's going to be perched on a branch. Now, in the past, I've done hummingbird with inserted wings, so in flight, and that's really more advanced. You can go back through my timeline, and you can see uh, I can take you step by step through how I did that but for the beginner I would recommend doing a perched one it'll do a couple of things that'll get, give you get you familiar with uh, the anatomy of a hummingbird it'll get you uh, used to some of the details without having to do the mortise and tenon and uh, it's just a little bit more advanced <clears throat> so the perched one um, I'm going to treat it more like a beginner's course on on how we do it. So let me show you the, the book and the pattern that I used. <clears throat> so this is the book right here and and this is the important part second printing. <clears throat> Let me get the camera so you can see this. This book, being different, doesn't have that pattern in it. Okay, this one does not have the pattern in it. It has a little bit more detail. It shows how to do metal work as well for habitat and kind of is, is more detailed about that. This one has several patterns in it, and it has the perched hummingbird. So if you're interested in doing the perched hummingbird, the important part is that second printing and the title. Okay, so. Here's the pattern that's in the book. And the only thing I wish the book would include are these lines because these, these lines are not included. So you'll have to do that yourself. And what I did is use one of these tools here to come across the, pa the paper like so and line up the eyes and give some extra space off to the side. So you want to make your lines long and all these lines need to be 90 degrees to this line. Thank goodness that this line, the center line of this bird is 90 degrees to this edge. So put those lines on there and what you're gonna do is wrap those lines around the side of the block because you need to line these eyes up with those eyes and the tip of this tail with the tip of that tail. So let me show you what I did. Here's the bird, the, the side profile, and you can see how it goes right through the eye there and this goes right through the eye. You don't have to use the eyes, but it just happens to be a really good marker to follow. Because, you know, the neck here could have been, but it really is not defined here at all. So you need a defined shape that you can carry across. The tail here is a good indicator for the tail there and I just use the end of the wood. So what I'll do is I'll take this to the bandsaw, cut that off. I believe I will cut the side profile out first, tape it back together, and then cut out the top profile. And the reason why I would choose the side this time is there's just not enough 
meat or wood there on the sides, um, I have a feeling that this is going to be the better option. Uh, and once you get experience on the bandsaw or scroll saw, you could actually do this on the scroll saw because it, it's only, what is this, maybe an inch, inch and a quarter maybe. We're looking at yeah, an inch and a quarter. It's only an inch and a quarter thick, so that would go on the bandsaw or a scroll saw for the side. I'm not sure if it would work this way. Let's see. A little more than an inch and a half. So it, it might work on a scroll saw. I've done them before on the scroll saw, so I'm sure I might have to, uh, if I was going to put it on the scroll saw, make sure that that line right there was cut. I'll be doing this on the band saw, so I won't have to do that. All right, so I took it to the bandsaw, and I've cut out this profile. Now, this part is important because I have this to rely on. So now I'm going to put it on the bandsaw like this and cut out the top profile. Let's see what the back side looks like. Now I've used tape, just regular scotch tape, to put it back together. So that the pattern will come out correctly, everything will register properly. All right, so here we are, right off the bandsaw. You can see the sides have been cut off now. And let's take a look at what the blank looks like. And this is the blank. This is our starting point. This is what we're going to make our perched hummingbird out of. All right, so now that we have him blocked out, this is what's called a blank. And you can buy blanks from wood carving supply places if you don't have a bandsaw or a scroll saw. You can buy blanks and get right into carving birds. Usually they come with, uh, you know, like a little blueprint of how the feathers are laid out and everything. Sometimes not, so make sure that if you buy just the blank that you also get a uh, pattern. And it's made just like a blueprint is made. First thing we need to do is find center line. So I'm going to, and I'm just eyeballing this, but you can use a, a center finding ruler. And I have a couple of them. And what that is, is a ruler and it begins with zero in the middle and it goes out one inch, one inch, two inch, two inch, three inch, three inch. And you can just lay it on there and you can see where the center of anything is. Very handy ruler. So I'm just going to center line all the way around. This is very important. And as you go, you will carve and remove this line sometimes, hopefully not too much of it, because that profile is exactly what that bird looks like. So you want to try to maintain this profile as you carve to the round. And what you'll be doing is carving from the center this way up to that line. From the center this way up to that line. And, and that will give you a rounded figure.
All right, so we have it speeded up about twice the speed here. And you can see the way I start is I just take the edges off. That does a couple things. It gets you past the anxiety of where do I start? You take the edges off with a 45 degree chamfer all the way around whatever you're carving. And as you see here, I'm carving down into the valley of this piece of wood. If you imagine that as a landscape, you never want to carve uphill. You'll simply dig into the grain of the wood. So if you're carving and it feels like you're getting stuck or there's a lot of resistance, just stop and go the other way. It, it should never be hard to carve. If you force the blade, something's wrong. Stop and try going the other way or try a different approach. It's again carving downhill. And here, downhill, down into the valley. Never go from in the valley up. You'll just sp either split the wood or hurt yourself. Now here I'm just cleaning up a little uh, where the band saw did a little bit of a rough cut in there and got that cleaned up. And you can see how I'm positioning my thumb here. I'm holding the, the piece of wood and my thumb is up and I'm bracing the knife hand against that thumb holding the bird. I always call that building a bridge. And that is really important, especially when you're working on something as, as small as this. But I always do this. Now, right there. Did you see where the knife kind of just dug in? So you can go from, because that's, a, that's the bottom of the valley and it starts going uphill in both directions. That's a tricky spot. And often I will get close to where I want to be with cutting into a valley like that. And I'll clean it up with sandpaper. Unless I'm doing like a flat plane carving, which you can leave it rough. But that transition, when doing a carving like this, You'll have to come from either direction, clean it up with sandpaper. All right, so let's take a look at the one that I carved earlier that has the beak included as this one. The beak I'm doing it like the book is showing, just to avoid any confusion. But because the grain of the wood runs with the beak, it is fairly stable. But the one thing that i found, especially if you have cats, is they like to chew on that beak. So if you make it out of uh, brass or copper wire, uh, it's, they're less likely to chew on it and uh, it'll last a lot longer. Here I'm just rounding out the body. So I'm constantly taking a look at where my lines are and as you can see I'm paring away and basically rotating the body of the bird. Kind of makes it a, a little bit easier to uh, round out that way but little tiny tiny chips uh, and that what and that's 
why I'm using this Excel knife. It is small. It has a small, that, that's a number 11 blade. And uh, I just find it very useful, handy. It's a nice knife. This Excel handle has four uh, gripping heads versus an Exacto, which only has two. Uh, and it seems to hold the blade a whole lot more secure than an Exacto would. The adjustment is on the very bottom. And it seems like once you tighten that, that blade is in there. It holds good and tight. Uh, love this little knife. Perfect for these small carvings. Now for the trickiest part of this particular carving, and that's separating the wings and getting the space underneath the wings carved out. Well, there isn't any carving that doesn't have some challenges to it. But you take it one little bit at a time and you can see that you take your time, small little V-cuts, and you can work your way through it. Now I do move on to a um, set of gouges because I just happen to have a set of gouges, brand new gouges that I got for Christmas, so I will be using those. But I have carved these just with a little razor knife like this. So there's a couple way to lay out the wings. You can use dividers to actually uh, get your reference marks on there. Or the easiest way is once you have the bird carved to the round and you have this shape already in place, you can cut out the wings, the side profile wings of your pattern lay them onto the bird, trace them on there, and then start working on cutting them out like that. So here I am just paring down the tail, and I'm just taking my time Got some good music on and just relaxed. And you just little little pieces, little uh, chips of wood. Don't get in a hurry. Don't take, you know, try to take too much out at once. And uh, once you start getting in the flow of carving and, and doing this it's very enjoyable just don't get in a hurry look how beautiful this is a ruby throated hummingbird so we're going to continue having nice reference material around you is very important I will have a lot of pictures surrounding me of hummingbirds when I'm doing a hummingbird. Reference material is very important. So surround yourself with it. And here is how I'm marking out the wings. Just lay the pattern over top of it. I make small perforations and draw it in with a pencil. It's important when you do this Make sure you have symmetry on both sides of the wings. So look at look at it from the top, from underneath, from the sides. Make sure you get that nice even 
look, and here's the wings for the back. I happen to have a, a gouge. It's it actually kind of looks like a vayner. What a vayner is, it looks like a the letter U. Um, and it gets down in there really, really well. And uh, you can do this with a straight blade. And I have done it with the all the other ones with the straight blade. But uh, I have these new gouges, so I might as well use them. What I'm trying to do is get the back a nice, smooth transition to the tail. So I'm removing all the wood that is cut out for the wing that is not the wing. And this is probably the hardest part is getting underneath the wing to cut that out. Here we're going on the tail and just scooping out. This is called a paring cut. And we're just kind of scooping that wood out from underneath to give a concave look. You don't want to go down too far in this because there is a set of feathers uh, that come up underneath the tail. I believe they're called tail coverts. And uh, then we'll draw them in. Referencing the pattern. Now the tail is really thick actually at, at this point. So there's a uh, quite a bit of carving to do on the tail to especially get the edges thin to give the illusion that the whole tail is thin. But it will just be the edges of this wood that comes to a, a taper, give the illusion of uh, very thin feathers. But uh, you can see there's, that's pretty thick right there. All right, so here I'm gonna use a gouge. And as you can see, I have a glove on. I always wear a glove when I'm using the gouges. Uh, it is a number six, five sixteen, or eight millimeter. And the reason why I'm using that particular gouge is I'm, it, it fits in the area underneath the tail. I'm pushing straight in, which creates a stop cut. And then I'm cutting up to the stop cut with this gouge and removing it removes a lot of wood very quickly. Uh, like I say, you don't have to have a gouge to do this, but I have a gouge and it makes it pretty quick and easy. The gouges are expensive. Um, the flex cut is probably along the less expensive gouges and they're decent they're a decent tool uh, I have a variety of other gouges that I really haven't gotten into using because gouges are expensive um, and we'll cover uh, a little bit on those later uh, but like I say you don't have to have a gouge to do this you can do it with a straight blade um, but this area right here is uh, with a straight blade to get that curve. Um, take your time, be patient, wear a glove when doing working underneath the tail. It is uh, one of the trickier areas to cut away. All right, we are two times the speed again. And like I said, you could do this with a straight knife. You would simply 
do a stop cut and then take small chips up, up to that stop cut. And there's a good demo of it right there. Doing a stop cut. Just kind of like a elongated V cut. You can get right up in there. Now I'm scoring the wing. It's basically a, a stop cut. And we'll cut up two. That stop cut taking the wood away. Revealing the wing. Now as you start to bring the wing out and relieve some of the wood around it, you will obviously have a flat spot. And then so you, once again, start to round the bird again so you don't end up with a flat spot on the sides. So you round the bird out so it's, it's constantly, uh, it's a fluid situation as soon as you uh, Get it to where you want it, you change it a little bit, and then you work on it a little bit more. Uh, that's just the kind of the way uh, carvings work. So as you see, this will have a lip now right here at the shoulder of the wing. And it has a flat spot, so you smooth it out. We'll start rounding again. And it really starts to take shape. Now here you can see I actually removed too much wood right there. That's right where the wood transitions. That's the low spot. That's the valley. So I ended up trying to sand out the marks and just took it a little too far. So time to adapt, adjust, and overcome. We will remove the outer part of this wings really gently, taking our time, watching it, and we'll get it to the point to where it's looking right again. So when making gentle adjustments like this, little tiny chips and sanding. Now here I'm sanding in front of and in back of the low spot to try to even out that area. And it seems to work out pretty good. Now that we've got the wings taken care of, the bottom of the wings need some attention. They need to be thinned out much like these. You can see how delicate they look. So I'll be focusing on that, removing that bulk of wood, and that's just tiny chips and patience. And you just whittle away. So join me next time and we will insert the eyes, insert the beak, detail and paint. We'll do it all in one video. So please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.